Okay, <clears throat> now this is further to the other video regarding 251 progressions, uh, how we used that little D minor 7, that little G7 to the C6, you may remember, and uh, using an A sharp diminished to uh, lead more convincingly into another D minor 7, and then using a G sharp diminished to a C6 9 in place of C, and um, using a G diminished, which is in place of an A7 flat 9 going to D minor 7, and so on. Now, that was using the top four strings. Okay, now if we use string four, three, and two, we can create quite a big sound by voicing our chords like this. And that's an interesting D minor seven where I have D with the first finger, C with the second finger, A with the little finger. So that's a D minus 7 uh, minus a root. We don't necessarily need the root note. But you can see the big sound that it creates. The beauty of this one is that we can just move the second finger and the little finger both down a fret and keep the first finger as a constant. And we have a little G7 flat 9. That's the fifth of the chord, that's the third, that's the flat 9. And then we go um, something like that to create a C made to 7. Now there's the C there, there's the B there, and there's the G there. So we're missing the root, which it would be here. But if we stick to those three voices, Back to D minor seven, we can just sharpen the C to a C sharp, flatten the B to a B flat. That creates an A seven flat nine without an A. I mean, you can always add the roots if you want. But just have a listen to how these three note chords, because they're well voiced, create quite a big, almost orchestra sort of sound. and so on. Now the interesting thing about those is also that we can use the open E at any time just to create more colour, you see? there, the option is there if we want it. And not necessarily every time. You could just make it less predictable by going and so on. Now naturally when you're comping, as well as a nice feel, um, you need to vary it a little. So instead of perhaps the second time round using that D minor 7, you might use this interesting D minor at 9. There's the F, there's the D and there's the E. Then you can use a constant tone. F for the G7 flat 9 and then you can just bring this back a fret you could leave the B on for C major 7 or add the A for a bigger sound as well so then just raise the A make it A sharp and that becomes the A7 flat 9 
and so on. So they're putting those two groups together. You can see the sort of fun you can have. You can just keep building and building and building in this way, exploring until every possible combination of string numbers and all over the board is covered and then you have the freedom to improvise comping and so rhythm doesn't necessarily have to be uh, less exciting than playing the actual lead parts. So there I was incorporating some of the three string bits as well. So you can see um, you've got to know your board very well. So take the time to learn your notes so that you know any note anywhere on the guitar. C, 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 etc. Know how to spell your chords. For D minor 7 you have D, F, A, C. For G7, G, B, D, F. And for C major 7, C, E, G, B. Know all those sorts of things. And know that you can add various colour tones to make it more interesting for yourself. And notice how you try to keep some continuity happening. Seven, D minor seven, to D minor seven, and have some sort of a melody. And have some sort of a theme. Da 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 ba do do ba do. Have something happening like that as well. All these sorts of things will make your comping really more interesting. see the, the possibilities are absolutely limitless. Infinite. Have fun. <laughs>